My name is Warren Hayes. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I understand from various publications like Outstanding Investor Digest that many of the best value investors are buying high quality multinational Japanese companies that are trading below net net working capital value. Do you agree that these values exist in Japan and would you consider the purchase of some of them? Well, Henry Emerson, who publishes the Outstanding Investors Digest, is here, so I will, uh, I will give a tout on it. I read the Outstanding Investors Digest, OID, and it's a, it's a, it's a very good publication. Uh, uh, and, I, and I have read some of, those, some of the commentary about, uh, about Japanese securities. We've looked at uh, securities in all major markets, and we certainly looked at them in, in Japan, particularly uh, in recent years when the Nikkei has so underperformed uh, the S&P here. Uh, we're quite a bit less enthused about those stocks as being any kind of obvious bargains than the people that, that you read about in OID. The uh, returns on equity in most areas of Japanese business, returns on equity are very, uh, very low. And it's extremely difficult to get rich by, owning, by being the owner of a business that earns a low return on equity. Uh, you know, we, we always look at what a business does in terms of what it earns on capital. We want to be in good businesses. What we really want to be is in businesses that are going to be good businesses and better businesses 10 years from now. And we want to buy them at a reasonable price. But many years ago, we gave up what uh, I've labeled the cigar butt approach to investing, which is where you try and find a, a really uh, uh, kind of pathetic company, but it sells so cheap that you think there's one good free puff left in it. And, and uh, uh, we used to pick up a lot of soggy cigar butts, you know. I mean, I had a portfolio full of them. Uh, and there were free puffs in them. I mean, it, I made money out of that. But A, it doesn't work with big money anyway. And, and, and B, we don't find many cigar butts around that we would be attracted to. The, uh, but they, those are the companies that had low returns on equity. And if you have a business that's earning 5 or 6% on equity and you hold it for a long time, uh, you are not going to do well in investing, even if you buy it cheap to start with. Time is the enemy of the of the poor business, and it's the it's the friend of the great business. I mean, if you have a business that's earning 20 or 25 percent on equity, and it does that for a long time, time is your friend. But time is your enemy if you uh, if you have your money in a low return business, and uh, you may be lucky enough to pick the exact moment when it gets taken over by someone else, but. Uh, uh, and we like to think when we buy a stock, we're going to own it for a very long time, and therefore we have to stay away from businesses that have low returns on equity. Charlie? Yeah, it's not that much fun to uh, buy a business where you really hope this sucker liquidates before it goes broke. <laughs> We've been in a few of those, too. <laughs> right. Yeah, Charlie and I, we, we, we uh, or at least I have, I've owned uh, stock in an anthracite room that don't know what anthracite is, street railway companies, windmill manufacturers. What other gems have we had, Charlie? Textiles. <laughs> yeah, textiles. <laughs> don't even think. <laughs> yeah, Berkshire was a mistake, believe it or not. I mean, it. Uh, we went into uh, Berkshire because it was cheap statistically, just as a as a, a general investment back in the early 60s, and it was a company that in the previous 10 years had earned less than nothing. I mean, it had a significant net loss over the previous 10 years. It was selling well below working capital, so it was a cigar butt, and uh, uh, it was. I mean, we could have done the things we've done subsequently from a neutral base rather than a negative base, and and actually it would have worked out better, but it's been a lot of fun.